For three months, I traveled the streets of Paris. I explored the city. I lived as a Parisian. These are the stories of people from America, black American writers who had decided to live there for various reasons, but many of them who were questioning who they were, where they belonged. So I came to Paris and like I said, thought I would stay for one year, um, but just, uh, just loved the city immediately. For a writer, you need an unimpeded spirit. In order for you to get wholly and truly what your environment is telling you, and you must answer it truthfully and your spiritual channels must be unimpeded. You're yes. going to do that. I can't do that back in the United States. Here, I can. Uh, you don't feel separatism in the air mm -hmm. um, the way I think you do uh, just about everywhere in, in the States. Paris is perfect for someone who feels out of place because basically you're all out of place here. I lived as a young man always alone. I never lived closer to my physical home in Alliance, never closer than a thousand miles. I remember my first trip here. I fell madly, madly in love with the city. The aftermath of 9-11 happened, as the Patriot Act happened, as people were being corralled. We had the civil rights struggle, and we had the Vietnam War. So these were two important important social events that changed America forever. This whole accumulation of, 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 of racial issues and conflicts and tensions just made me wonder if I really wanted to, wanted to stay in the country. There's one thing they didn't want at the apex. They didn't want a black man. He's the one thing they never wanted to see. It's a black man. The only response was to kill him. After the racial profiling incident that I had, you know, I didn't want to be here. You know, the Rodney King videotape uh, emerged at the end of the Gulf War. And I'd been watching the Gulf War on TV for weeks. And I saw this videotape, and I don't know if the sound was turned down on the TV or what, but I thought, wow, things are out of control in Iraq, you know? <laughs> Kuwait, you know? Uh, I came here in 1968, for good. Mm -hmm. Night that I sailed, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Not me, I didn't get going, I would like get depressed. I couldn't believe it. I mean, how human beings could watch another human being being treated this way. And, and it occurred to me that a lot of people on that jury, um, if it had been a dog being attacked like mm -hmm. that, uh, they would have found the cops guilty. The intense hatred and calculated brutality that black Americans have survived. Get somewhere else. I wanted to be somewhere else. I wanted to be in some other place, any other place. And what better place to go to than the place that called Baldwin, Miles Davis, uh, and many other artists, Josephine Baker. And I met many, many people, many expatriate Americans who had questions about their identity. So I think it's really part of a collective pathology that has to do with growing up in a racist environment that just messes with your identity so much that you end up trying to identify with this very extreme, narrow image of blackness. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and it becomes a sort of intellectual treadmill because the whole question is, oh, who's really black and who's not? Mm -hmm. Rather than saying, uh, that there are as many different black consciousnesses as there are black people. Mm -hmm. And there is no one monolithic black consciousness. There's no one authentic black consciousness. Each one is as authentic as the other. So then I started thinking, maybe I'm more American than I thought. And maybe American isn't what I thought it was. Somebody is making you think about these terms knowing that you should be thinking about something different. So it's a mental trap that you're put into that makes you think about race. Somebody is profiting, but not you. Yeah, Malcolm X had heart. Had heart and mind. He had it. Mm. He had it too much, of course. And when he wanted to spread the results of his heart and mind to other countries, then they had to get rid of it. So 
even black people, began to connect themselves with things outside the United States. Then they're on a heavenly track. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs>